G'day folks, MBS again. Well, here I am working on this uh, 202 engine again. Uh, all the rest of my videos have failed, unfortunately, but hopefully this one will work. I've got a brand new camera in operation now, and we'll see how it all goes. Before, I, what we're going to actually do today is I've only just come over here to fire this thing up. All right, so we've done a cam in it. We've got new lifters. We've done the timing already. We've, the owner's put the carby, all that sort of stuff on. We've got a starter. Everything's good to go. We've got an oil pressure gauge connected. All good to go. But before we get into the actual starting of it, I just wanted to do just one last thing. Now, we've static timed this uh, visually, opening the points up. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is actually double check it and make sure it's pretty damn close before we actually fire it up. For that, I'm going to be using this test light. We're going to be putting that on the negative terminal of the coil. Okay. So we'll place that on there so that it actually lights the light up. And we'll get power to the coil. And then we're going to crank the engine over. And we're going to watch for the light on the test light to come on when the points crack open. All right. So uh, that's all we're going to do. And then I'm going to go and fire it up. All right. So we'll get some uh, power to the coil. Now we want to do this reasonably quickly, you don't want power going to the ignition for too long. So we'll get that power on and all we're looking for is for that light to come on. So I'm going to crank the engine over slowly. I've got nearly on the timing mark and we're going to wait for that light to come on and that will give us our timing. There we go, that's where it's timed. Now I'll bring the uh, camera down onto the pulley. Oh, how good is that, Chris? Holy crap. I did a pretty good job of static timing it, didn't I? Okay, here we go. Camera, hey, what happened here? We'll go down there. No editing. Look at that. Hey, how good is that? That is spot on around about uh, 9, 10 degrees. Cool. I'm worth more money, Chris. <laughs> well, there you, there you go, guys. We're having a bit of a chuckle about it. But uh, that was done by I the other uh, probably three or four days ago. And uh, I got it exactly where I wanted it. So, yeah, static, um, static timing by I watching the points crack open was one method I've shown you before. The other method was to turn the ignition on. Better turn the ignition off, eh? Don't want to leave that on for too long. And, and the other method I've shown you before is uh, turning the ignition on and then observing a spark at the points uh, to get your timing. And of course, there's this method where you use a test light and uh, just watch the light come on, uh, which is probably the most accurate short of a timing light. All right. But in this case, Chris reckons I fluked it, but... <laughs> But uh, that was, that's spot on. If I was to put a timing light on that, that's where she'd be. And of course, you'd think a timing light would be the most accurate method to uh, do your timing. But uh, obviously, you're not going to use a timing light when you're first firing a brand new engine up. Uh, you've got to get it all statically done. And that's how it's done, guys. Okay. Rightio, we're not far from uh, getting this little fellow fired. There are a couple of essential things you need. You need an oil pressure gauge, okay? You don't fire up a brand new engine without a gauge, all right? That is an absolute no-no. You are taking potluck uh, if you're game enough to do that because if you don't have oil pressure, how are you going to know until the engine starts uh, ticking its little brains out or the uh, hydraulic lifters don't pump up and it just keeps ticking? Well, I guess you know you haven't got any oil pressure, right? Eh? But uh, you want to avoid that. Now, a lot of cars, you can pre-prime the oil, uh, like the Clevelands and the six-cylinder Fords, um, everything that has an oil pump drive below the distributor. Um, it's usually the distributor that turns the oil pump at the end. Uh, you'll have a screwdriver slot or something like that, uh, which will drive the oil pump. So you can actually prime all those up uh, before you even put your distributor in. Just get a special drive, use an electric drill, spin up the oil pressure, get all the uh, oil flowing through the engine before you even fire it, which is the absolute best scenario. 
But for cars like this, uh, the only way we could get all pressure into this would be to remove all the spark plugs and just crank it over without it firing and, and then get our oil pressure up that way. Um, however, uh, we're limited for time here, so we're just going to uh, hook up the oil pressure gauge, make sure we've got it. And I'm going to fire it up and I expect to have oil pressure within uh, probably four or five seconds at the very outside. If I don't get oil pressure by then, I'll be switching it off and uh, checking a few things. The next thing you need is fuel. All right, so we've got a rather crude uh, fuel line hooked up here by gravity. That's probably got just a little bit under half a PSI pressure in it maybe at that height. Okay, so uh, that'll be enough for us. It's got fuel in the carby. So what we have to do is make sure the accelerator pump works, yeah? So we're going to uh, now And we have no accelerator pump, guys, which isn't going to help us one little bit to fire this up. Hopefully, we've got some starcher bastard. Yeah, some good old spray that we can spray down the carburetor just to get it going. Um, however, is fuel getting to it? Well, we know fuel's getting to here because it was pouring out when uh, the owner sucked it through the line and then pushed it on. So we know that fuel is up to this point, but we don't know if the needle and seat is actually open uh, to get the fuel into the carburetor. So hopefully it is, because if it isn't, it ain't gonna go, all right? So that's uh, another thing you have to make sure you've got, all right? There are other things, you know, you wanna make sure your manifold's all good and there's no leaks, all the vacuum ports are plugged off so you're not sucking air anywhere in the system. But yeah, look. We're pretty well much good to go. I'm going to need this starcher bastard. Uh, otherwise, this thing ain't going to fire. Um, starcher bastard will give you instant response just like that, guys. It's pretty damn good stuff, whereas petrol may take a little time to ignite sometimes, being cold like it is now. So you've got to have just the right amount of fuel for it to fire up. Uh, but with starcher bastard, you only give it a little bit of a spray and it'll ignite. All right, so... Let's hope we've got fuel and we'll start her up. Hopefully it'll run. Oh, folks, I've done it again. The camera wasn't on when we fired it up. So we've missed out on that little uh, firing session. But we're going to fire it up again shortly because we've got a problem. All right. We had a problem straight up. It wouldn't fire up when we were turning it over the first time. And that was because there was no fuel in the carburetor. We thought we had fuel, but... I'd say what happened is when he siphoned the fuel out of that bottle and he went to put the line onto the carburetor, he lifted it up a little bit too high compared to the level in the bottle, it would have just drained back and he would have lost his siphon. And he put it on and we couldn't get it going. Sorry, the pump wasn't working. Uh, and he bought the wrong product. He didn't have start your bastard, he had shift your bastard. So <laughs> wrong, wrong crap. Okay, so we relied totally on on fuel to get this thing going, and it didn't have any. I took the top off the carburetor and saw straight away, no fuel in there. So uh, we checked the siphon, uh, there you go. Re-siphoned it, we could see the fuel then coming in through the needle and seat, and it filled the carburetor up, and the accelerator pump sorta of started working. It's not a good strong jet of fuel, but it's enough to get us going. Put the top back on, fired it up, it ran for five seconds, and as I said earlier, if you haven't got oil pressure by then, shut it off. The engine was very rattly, as you would expect. The hydraulic lifters didn't pump up, and so all those clearances were just chapping their little heads off. All right, so lucky we had the oil pressure gauge here to check, and it showed zero the whole time. So now we're taking the oil pump off, and hopefully it's not a pickup problem inside the, uh, the sump area. Uh, so we're going to take the pump off, check that it's lubed properly, and if it isn't, I'll lube it up and get some suction happening on it. We'll whack it back on, we'll have another go at firing it up and see if it picks the oil up. If it doesn't pick the oil up, uh, sump has to come off, eh? And he'll have to look at his pickup and see what the problem is. All right. Here you go, guys. We've got the oil pump off just for shits and giggles, just to uh, make fun of the owner. <laughs> It's dry as a bone in here, eh? 
no grease whatsoever. No wonder it's not picking up any oil. You have to have this grease in here, guys, some sort of form of um, lubricant that when the two teeth meet, that they seal very well and create a suction. Without grease in there to start off with, you're not going to get any suction out of this at all. Not enough to pick it up out of the sump anyway. The, uh, so we just put a smear of grease over all the gears, every single one of them, make sure there's grease in between them. And then we put the plate back on. Uh, we'll put some oil in the filter to help it along and uh, we'll put it back on and see if we've got uh, oil pressure. But yeah, look, it's, it's the usual story, isn't it? Uh, you asked the, 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 uh, your mate, did you make sure you put grease in the gears and everything and it sh so it's all primed? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so there you go. <laughs> Doesn't always work out that way, does it? So attention to detail, guys. Uh, when you're doing up a motor, you want to make sure all this stuff is good. All right. Let's uh, finish this off, get it back together and on the motor and see if we can get it going again. Okay, guys, uh, we've, we've primed the oil pump up. Uh, it's all good. When you spin the gears and the uh, grease comes out between the gears, you know you've got it primed. All right, so just shove the grease back in there so you can put your top cover plate back on and then we'll put it back onto this engine. Another thing I've noticed that the owner has done here is too much goop on that gasket, yeah? It was uh, just about blocking, well, I wouldn't say blocking, but partially restricting the suction uh, hole in the gasket, uh, which isn't good. And also the discharge hole coming up through here, back into the block, that was uh, all goop was protruding into the uh, gallery hole. Uh, way too much goop, guys. Yeah, you've got to just use it sparingly. Just a nice little smear. I know the gasket is thin, so uh, really you should be running a sanding block over this. Make sure it's nice and flat and uh, gives the gasket a chance to seal. But yeah, just a nice little smear of uh, uh, goop on there, whatever you're, you're using. Um, could be that paste stuff that goes on off a brush, could be out of a tube, uh, but it needs to be, make sure it's oil resistant uh, so it doesn't um, cause any damage. And yeah, because you put too much on and it squeezes out, of course, when you tighten everything up and it's just going to squeeze out into the uh, gasket holes here, the most important ones, the discharge and the uh, suction. Uh, so you don't want to be blocking them up, especially if the goop dries hard. All right. So yeah, it just causes a restriction. Well, hopefully we'll get this oil pump back on and uh, we'll uh, have oil pressure and we'll continue on with the job. On. On. You want to fire it up again, see if I can adjust it back to an idle. What, what oil pressure? Oh, just over 50. Yeah, yeah, we don't want to run it any longer than that. The, uh, unless you want to go to the trouble of hooking up water yeah, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it's still idling over a thousand. Um, so yeah, I didn't have time to bring it down even lower and adjust the mixtures. Uh, better off doing that waiting where it's cold. But then if you try and adjust it when it's cold, it's not going to work out for you. Once it warms up, it'll be different. 
So you really want the engine at operating temperature when you're adjusting carburetor. Got too excited, I does. Yeah. All right. There you go. Um, somehow I don't think you would have got it going on your own, mate. <laughs> Something tells me. <laughs> I reckon I would have, Marco. <laughs> but probably would have had no oil pressure. Uh, yeah, I would have pushed the force and got it there. Yeah, you would have. Motor would have been half destroyed yeah. with uh, no oil pressure happening. Well, there you go, folks. Got it going at long last. It wasn't too difficult to sort it out. As you can see, quite a few little errors along the way. Um, what we thought we had, we didn't uh, as far as fuel went. Um, but yeah, it, pay attention to the details and you can't go wrong. So uh, we got our timing right. We had spark, all good. We didn't have fuel, okay. We fixed the fuel problem. We didn't have oil. Um, pressure so we had to fix the oil pressure side um, now without that gauge in there this uh, I'm sure you heard the difference when the oil pressure came up as far as the rattle went um, so you would have heard that rattle the whole time and you would have to start thinking to yourself gee something's not right here and you would have probably shut it down within 20 seconds anyway um, thinking in your head I might not have oil pressure uh, even because you, you wouldn't have had the gauge obviously but yeah, very handy to have that gauge available so that you can uh, make sure that it's got oil pressure when it fires up because you can do your motor in fairly quickly without oil pressure. Hopefully uh, all the assembly lube that was uh, put on all the parts uh, would save it, um, especially if you're doing a full engine rebuild. Uh, this isn't a full rebuild, it's just a partial build, a head plonked on, a cam put in. Um, so it wasn't a full rebuild. So, uh, yeah. So, I don't know what he plans to do with the motor, but it's a goer and he'll have a bit of a play with it while I'm not around and get it going again. It's not too hard now that he's, he's uh, been behind my back and in front of me watching what I do. Uh, so, learning as we go along. And that's what it's all about, folks learning, um, figuring out the problem and solving it. Okay. So, uh, hopefully, this has helped you along the way when you fire up your motor, regardless of whether it's a Holden 6, whatever. Um, take the precautions and make sure everything is right before you uh, try and fire it up because uh, that five or six grand engine you're doing up could turn to shit real quick if you uh, don't get things right on fire up, uh, especially running the cam in, yeah? This is, or, um, the actual cam in this was already run in, so we didn't have to rev it high for the 20 minutes or so. Okay, but uh, when you're running a new cam and all that sort of thing, you've got 20 minutes of running that uh, you have to make sure everything's spot on uh, for, it, for you to get through that running in period. And uh, that's all I've got to say, guys. Um, catch you in another video.